And I hope, I hope uh, people will have heard of Purism and people will have heard of the, the phone we're producing and Libra 5, but I don't want to make any assumptions. So I'm going to talk a bit uh, about the company and about the phone project. And then I'm going to talk about the work I've been doing, which is, uh, like I say, uh, making a phone call. So talk about uh, the requirements we had, the work that we've already kind of looked at, and our work. Uh, I'm going to give a demo, which is going to be absolutely thrilling, and uh, talk about what we're going to do in the future. So the company, uh, Purism, is uh, it's a, called a social purpose company. So it's kind of a bit... Um, uh, a bit unique or a bit uh, unusual, uh, and Wikipedia. I, I should point out as well, like I'm not a, a company spokesperson, so this is just from this is the view of the company uh, as a developer. So, Social Purpose Corporation uh, is basically like a, um, uh, a company that uh, has a legal protection against including social concerns in its business decisions. So, an ordinary company could be sued, the management could be sued by shareholders. Uh, if they make business decisions that impact uh, finances, but they do that for social purposes, they could be in legal trouble. Whereas with purism, there's legal protections in place, and obviously the uh, the social concerns are uh, basically free software and uh, and security. Policing. So uh, initially produced. Uh, a laptop, 15-inch laptop called the Libra 15, which was crowdfunded, uh, and that was the, uh, the focus on that was on kind of uh, you know a, a fully uh, Libra, a fully free uh, system that could run uh, GNU Linux and provide uh, an e like a like an easy to use so like basically put put security and privacy in people's hands. Without it being a big headache, that's that's the that's the idea, and also to do that in a way that's uh, like you know fully fully respects freedom rather than you know you look at some of the kind of um, the, the the secure kind of uh, phones, uh, and they're, they're, they they may have provide those services, but they do so with lots of proprietary software and lots of bots and so on. So uh, so the laptops uh, were intended to do something similar with laptops, uh, but do it. Um, in a, in a respectful way, and they have things like hardware kill switches, which is quite um, unusual for like the tap and stuff like that. Um, so these laptops run uh, Debian-based uh, derivative called Puros, uh, which is um, certified or uh, I'm not sure what the word is. I guess certified by the FSF, um, as it uh, it follows their guidelines for free system distributions, which means basically. Um, they, they give their thumbs up to it. It doesn't include any blobs. And as a policy, if there is any proprietary software in the distribution, then that's considered a bug and, uh, as, a, as a policy. Uh, and obviously, it uses a good you know, user interface. As I said, the idea is for it, for it to be uh, easy to use, so it uses GNU. And uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't have, um, there's, there's a uh, free system distribution, uh, which PureOS, the operating system, has. Uh, this FSF certification, but there's also respect your freedom certification, uh, which is for the hardware, and that's different. The laptop, they don't have uh, respect your freedom uh, certification because there are blobs in the uh, firmware for the the, the main uh, the chip. Basically, uh, there's this uh, FSP uh, firmware software package, uh, which Intel is. Uh, 
claws onto uh, and won't let anyone uh, access even Google. Google has Google been trying to um, get them to give them a source for it years about it. Have been successful, so um, so the company is trying to reverse engineer. That's so we employ reverse engineers to to free the um, uh, the, the binaries that are used in the, the bootloader and then hopefully get um, respect your freedom certification. Uh, so the phone uh, again was another uh, crowdfund uh, campaign that was successful, uh, and again this as the laptops, but just for a phone. Uh, and again, quite and uh, relatively unique. I think there's one other project that has hardware kill switches, particularly for the uh, for the modem, because the modems are basically these horrible black holes of proprietariness that um, are completely out of uh, out of reach. And so, essentially, they're just treated, or they need to be treated as kind of uh, suspect. So. On the Librem 5, there's a hardware kill switch to switch off uh, the modem. Uh, and again, it runs, so very critically, it runs GNU Linux, not, not Android or iOS. So it's a GNU Linux stack. Uh, and obviously, the intention is for uh, the, the software stack to be based on GNU. Uh, it'll have an IMX CPU with uh, Vivante GPU. That's chosen basically because because of, uh, the GP doesn't need any blobs and there's a free software driver for it. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, run pure OS. And so, so a little while ago, uh, last year, one of our um, pure OS guys posted to the um, desktop develop list, asking about uh, you know like how how can uh, GNOME facilitate uh, this uh, mobile phone effort, and how can purism facilitate uh, GNOME being on this uh, this phone? So, kind of like basically, you know, where are we going to go? How can we get uh, GNOME into a place where we can use it on a mobile phone? And out of that conversation came. I remember there's one particular email. I can't remember who wrote it, but um, there was one email that said uh, basically, "Yeah, this is good. We want this. We want." Um, GNOME to be usable on mobile phones and tablets and that kind of thing, but no one's going to do that for you, and so you have to make that happen. And so, uh, the, so the way I, I've kind of seen it is that that's, that's kind of a, um, a mandate for us to spearhead this uh, this GNOME mobile effort, which is basically what we've been doing. Uh, so, like I said, what I've been working on is is actually making a phone call. So the, the, these are these are kind of general requirements, really, for for all of the the work that we've been doing, uh, but particularly for the the, um, the phone stuff. So it's obviously using using the GNOME platform and GTK uh, user interfaces, uh, adapting existing tools and technologies wherever we can. Uh, there's a limited amount of time. The uh, phone is to be delivered in January, so there's a Limited amount of time to, to do development, and we don't. So we don't basically have time to kind of come along and say like, right, we're going to build our a whole new uh, operating system and phone system. Uh, we're just taking what we can and adapting it uh, for use on the phone. And only when we can't do that are we going to develop new software. So one of the things um, that that um, there isn't at the moment, there isn't a, a phone dialer, but obviously for a mobile phone. Uh, pretty critical is the facility to make phone calls. So that's what I've been working on. So what's the, what is there already uh, is the, there was a, a project called uh, Free Smart. Well, there is I should say a project called FreeSmartphone.org that came out of Open Loco, and that's got lots and lots of stuff in it. It's basically a whole framework for running a mobile phone, uh, and it, it oversteps a lot of. Uh, the GNOME stuff like battery, uh, location, networking, all that kind of stuff, it's all in um, there. So, so the, the the stipulation for us to use GNOME platform kind of interferes with this. It is modular, so appa apparently we could could take things out. But I think if you don't take it as a whole, then it kind of uh, loses its value. Uh, on Memo, and I'm conscious there may well have been people who worked on Memo uh, at this conference. Uh, Nemo had uh, something called cellular services daemon, but this was proprietary. 
So the services daemon was proprietary, and I looked and try, I tried to find the um, because if there was any code to, for the actual dialer, you know, like the dial pad that, that makes the phone call, I couldn't even find the code. I didn't, look, I didn't actually look that far, um, but I, I couldn't find anything uh, with a quick look. And I kind of, I don't, I don't even know the dialer itself may may be proprietary, um, but basically there's not much help there. Um, Ophono uh, came out of Nokia and uh, Intel's efforts uh, with Migo, uh, and that's kind of it's a it's a, a framework for uh, making uh, phone calls and doing uh, like mobile data and that kind of thing. Um, and it's still maintained. Uh, I read a blog post a little while ago that, that kind of um, trashed Ophono. One of the things that it said was that there wasn't much maintenance going on with it, um, but there's plenty of any commits in there, uh, and it's used in Mer and Selfish. So it's used in shipping phones, uh, in in self in Selfish OS, uh, and also in UB ports, which is uh, uh, it was was Ubuntu Touch, uh, and there's Modo Manager as well. So this is, so Modo Manager was originally like for for kind of just dealing with like mobile three D dongles, uh, but there's had a voice call tacked onto that, as was pointed out to me on the desktop develop this. Uh, but this call support is very rudimentary. So it's very it's basically like there's like dial and answer and hang up and not much more. Um, there's no support for more complex things like call wait and uh, call bar and that kind of thing. Um, but it is a, a free desktop.org project as opposed to a phono which is just kind of I think it's on kernel.org. Um, but it's uh, it's not it's not in line with the, the GNOME platform. Um, but having said that, there, there are uh, telepathy connection managers for a phone. So there's one called telepathy ring, which is kind of like the de facto standard. I guess if there is if there is a, um, a, a way of making phone calls with GNOME at present, it's with telepathy ring. Because uh, this, is, this is the telepathy connection manager to make use of a phone though. To to uh, to do uh, cellular connectivity. So this was originally for the Mamo um, cellular services demon on the N900. Someone ported it to Ophono. Again, this is used in Mur and Selfish OS. And in fact, Mur is is like now the the upstream. So all all of the all of the work is now going on in Mur, but it's not been moved there. Uh, the website and links haven't changed yet. In, in telepathy, there's um, there's different channel types, so you have like text and streamed media, and there's a newer newer uh, channel type, which is more appropriate apparently, uh, called call one, and telepathy ring only uses the old stream media type. There's another Ophono connection manager called telepathy Ophono, and this are, this came from Ubuntu's uh, well. Originally, from what was Ubuntu for Android, so it made use of like Android libraries and Android RAL, uh, the, the the modem stuff on Android, uh, and then again, this was ported to a phone. This is what's used in UB ports, and it supports the newer um, call one channel type. But just like telepathy ring, like I say, it's used in ship phones, uh, so telepathy phone. But there's a lot more. But like Ubuntu dropped. Uh, Ubuntu Touch. So, and there's uh, there, there's development going on, but it's not at as high a rate. Whereas Telepathy Ring has been around for a lot longer, and it's had a lot more eyes on it, a lot more work on it, and uh, there's a lot more effort going into it now because it's in the and selfish. So in the uh, or Mur selfish is uh, a, they, they, there's a system called Voice Call. Uh, which is like a free, it's a free software daemon uh, for for like uh, for making voice calls, uh, uh, but it's written in QML, Qt. Uh, it's, it's all based on that, and I, I couldn't find any I couldn't find any free software UI. So it's there. There's a so it's like a daemon that that uh, you know offers like interfaces over this QML. And then you have like a, a user interface that you can stick on front of it to, to kind of dial calls and show uh, answer calls and that kind of thing. Uh, the, 
the only dialer that I'm aware of that works is the selfish one, which is proprietary. Uh, there are, there, I was looking at this and then suddenly saw there's this new glacier. It, Mur, uh, so, so if you don't know, Mur is like a, a kind of open source uh, underpinnings of selfish. And selfish is a proprietary kind of layer on top. And there were efforts to make a uh, free software layer on top to replace the parts of Selfish. Wow, got no time left. Okay. Uh, but uh, anyway, MERS, uh, yeah, not been released uh, for, since 2014, so there's not much work going on with MERS. Uh, Plasma Mobile uses the same daemon, uh, but uh, again, QML, so not good for GNOME. Uh, UB ports again has its own uh, dialer system again written with QML, so not good for GNOME. So uh, our work, uh, we what we chose to do is to uh, write a dialer on top of telepathy ring, uh, and to, that would get us not only um, normal uh, phone calls but also like SIP calls uh, and also anything else that su might uh, support telepathy, like matrix. Uh, so, uh, the idea was to create a thin abstraction layer first, uh, which would talk directly to Ophono and then replace uh, the Ophono layer with a layer that talks to telepathy. And this is the uh, this is the kind of abstraction. So you have a provider, which can be like a, a modem, a phono modem, or a telepathy connection manager, an origin being a, like a telepathy account or uh, a modem. Uh, and then a call is just a, a telepathy channel or a, an Ophono call. So uh, I'm hoping uh, I'm going to have enough time to do a demo. So would anybody really like to help me uh, increase the chances of the demo failing by providing a UK telephone number for me to dial? Hang on, there's, there's a, there's a, go on, hang on, hang on. Okay, I'm going to put it in normal, normal format, but go on. Is that right? I go, why don't I dial it? Let's see if it rings. So I'm going to dial it, and then I'm going to touch the dial pad, and you should hear DTMF tones. This is where the stress comes in. Oh, oh! Uh, if you can, can you answer it? Answer it. Do you answer it? Okay. Are you hearing? Are you hearing DTMF tones? Yes, it works. It works. Yes. So there we are. There we are. It's done. So you can see now. Oh, I've disconnected it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And unfortunately, I don't think I've got much time to do another test. <laughs> so, so uh, the future work that we have to do. Um, so, if you dialed, if you dialed that number, the, at the moment the program won't make any noise, which is obviously pretty critical. You need to have like ringtones. So, uh, so we need to add that call history. Uh, it needs to be integrated with contacts. So, we need to be able to like dial numbers from uh, contacts in GNOME contacts. And we also need to be able to save numbers to contacts in GNOME contacts. Uh, and we need to do like uh, more complex stuff like call barring, call waiting, uh, and obviously the telepathy backend, which is uh, really uh, really the the the, uh, the goal. Uh, there's other stuff uh, outside as well. Like we, so, at the moment, I've had to while I was while I was typing uh, feverishly at the start, I was bringing up the modem. 
uh, which we have to do manually at the moment. So we need a uh, component that will automatically bring up the modem. Uh, we also need to do like pin entry for the SIM uh, and emergency calls, and that's going to need like uh, collaboration with uh, the shell, the FOSH. Uh, and in the more distant future, uh, concurrent providers possibly, so like having like maybe a phono and a SIP provider or a matrix provider or something like that. You could do it at the level of our abstraction rather than telepathy. Video calls, uh, like like 3G video calls, uh, matrix calls, uh, audio, video, and this kind of nebulous uh, telepathy NG which keeps coming up in discussions, which there's a big, really around here, there's a big kind of question mark about what and and I think one of the reasons that I'm here and one of the reasons uh, that, that I'm kind of giving this pre presentation is to kind of uh, stimulate discussion about what this kind of future of uh, telepathy and kind of an integrated system where we can do voice calls and video calls and SIP calls and matrix calls with the same kind of UI. Uh, so, thank you. Uh, so, uh, there is uh, a break now, it has already started, and it's uh, sponsored by Slimbook, so there's going to be coffee and tea outside uh, now. Uh, so, and I think the, I don't quite remember how, how long the break is, it's until, checking the schedule, until, uh, hmm, is that one? Yes. So we do have time for questions. No, wait, wait, is this the... No, 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 no. There's a break now. Uh, but uh, if any of you are not in a rush, we can take a few questions, uh, as I'm sure some of you probably have some. So let's do this. Hi. Um, I was wondering why you ended up choosing Ofono. Obviously, it's been used in a couple of, uh, of different projects that are already you know, or already exist, already ship. Uh, I think that modern manager would have been uh, a better option in terms of the the drivers that it supports because Ofono was built as open core, which means you need to bring in your own driver. So, which driver did you end up selecting, and is it free software? That driver, I'm guessing that it is, but. Are you are you sure that you're going to be able to get free software, Ofono drivers for the hardware that ends up in the machine? Well, uh, okay. So, so there's a couple, there's kind of a few things there. So the driver is uh, one I wrote. So yes, free software. So in fact, it's, it's merged in uh, in upstream Ofono now. The issue of like why what so why did we choose Ofono? Uh, yeah. So really, the main contenders were like Ofono and Modo Manager. And like I said, Modo Manager is the cool. The cool support is. I mean, Modo Manager is is kind of like the the good uh, kind of choice really from a GNOME perspective. But we also have to like think about the. Uh, so we're providing a mobile phone, and we need to be able to support uh, uh, real world uh, phone operations on phone networks. Yeah. And. The, the modem manager it has cool support, but it, Ofono really is the one that excels in the real world uh, phone voice call uh, uh, functionality. So, like I said, having having uh, functionality like uh, supporting call waiting and like conference calls and that kind of thing. And so, so I mean, really, you know, so we're producing like a phone that people are going to put in their pocket, you know, and we need to be able to support like the the full standard of the GSM. Uh, all it of it is just that I, I mean, you can take that as advice or not. The thing is that once you start pulling that string, you start thinking about you're probably going to need to have either do a lot of work on GNOME to support Ofono directly, 
because uh, he only does support model manager and network manager right now. So that's going to be a lot of work to uh, to move that to uh, to a phono uh, to a phono, and I don't remember the name of this uh, separate demon. Yeah, uh, that's going to be a, an awful lot of work to to merge into GNOME, uh, and once you once you take into account all the work that you will need to do within GNOME to support a phono, maybe would have been the same amount of work. Uh, making modern manager better, um, perhaps. But yeah. I'm not the one doing the work, so I'm not going to yeah, tell yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. I, 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 uh, I, I appreciate that, and yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, I understand, you know. Uh, uh, now this, this, I got, I got the same alarm on my phone. I'm like, why, why is my phone alarm going off? Uh, yeah, no, I, 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 uh, I understand that, and yeah, it's, it's. Uh, so there's kind of like this balance. We could take, uh, we could like add lots of support to Modem Manager, or we can take Ophono, which works, and get it to make phone calls, or use that to make phone calls, and then do do the kind of whatever SIM management. I mean, I, I I'm not sure the extent of the changes that we're going to need to support Ophono, like Ophono as opposed to anything else, in like say GNOME settings or whatever. Uh, it's it's a like I say it's a balance between like so how much work is it going to be to tack stuff onto to to expand the voice call support in Modem Manager compared to uh, add support to a phono in things like GNOME settings. As I understand it, I, I mean the the like I say the voice call support in Modem Manager is still rudimentary. Um, I don't know uh, exactly where the where Modem Manager touches. Uh, you know, as my my understanding is so so like you know when I when I pick up my Android phone I go into the settings and there's like loads of settings for uh for like uh network and all that I know Modem Manager has that in GNOME settings uh but I don't think so it's there uh I don't know how uh, how uh, big a deal it's going to be to change that to a phone but there's it's all kind of there. It just needs to be switched. I presume that's what we're talking about then, to, to kind of put, plug a, a phone onto the back of that. I talked to Modern Manager in Gunnum Settings Demon, in Gunnum Shell, in Gunnum Control Center, and probably some related projects, like in terms of UI. There's, there's quite a few. I mean, you know, I, I, I would just say take a look when you get. When you have the time, see how much work it's actually going to be, okay. and, yeah. and you know you can make your decision. Okay, thank you. It hopefully, it will be the uh, the right one for you. Great. I see uh, another question over here. Uh, when you were evaluating modem manager, did you talk with Alexander? Uh, I did talk with him, though, but he's the guy who pointed out <laughs> that Modem Manager makes phone calls. Yeah. But also, if you're doing like combat, like obviously, like the FCC's goal of like robocalls and like preventing. Uh, it makes phone calls. <laughs> uh, okay, what, what, what? Uh, could you expand on what you mean by uh, phone freezing? A series of phone calls from one series of, you know... Uh, well, I mean, I think, uh, like, if you were going to do that kind of stuff... Uh, so there's a couple of there. So if you're going to, like, if you wanted to sit down and make the computer, like, do lots of robocalls, you probably wouldn't use uh, GNOME Dialer, you just use uh, Ophono directly. Ophono's got uh, Dbus uh, uh, API, so you just write a, a, a script to do that and make, it lots, make lots of phone calls. With regard to like doing like hacky stuff with the you know with the phone system, I think really what you'd want to be working on is like the the uh, the operating system that runs on the modem, which I, I mentioned before is kind of a black hole. But there are efforts to free that. There's uh, the open uh, 
I can't remember what it's called now, Open BTS, and uh, uh, there's a bunch of guys, one of the guys who worked on Open Loco, uh, Harold Belka, uh, he, um, he's got a, a whole uh, free software system now for running, uh, three, setting up and running 3G networks, and two, 2G and 3G networks, and also uh, part of that uh, is uh, like building a free software stack to run on uh, modems and so like in the distant future when those guys have managed to produce a modem which runs free software then I'm sure yeah we will more than uh, love to grab that and put that in our phone but uh, at the moment uh, that I know that project is still very rudimentary it still needs like a PC connected to it um, to, to actually even work uh, so there's a long way to go with that in the meantime we've got these unfortunately uh, not very friendly black boxes, um, but plenty. There's plenty of room for hacking there. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. Any last questions? Uh, no. All right. Thank you, Bob. Um, <laughs> there should be a break now, and it should last for until. Uh, 12.15, um, so half an hour.